afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to our final stream. We got all kinds of things going on here, so don't mind us. <laughs> Welcome back. Please like, comment, share these videos, um, hit that subscribe button. Um, we're getting so close to 200, so please go do that. Um, let's get going. Uh, if you still need a copy of the notes, in the description of this video, if you scroll down a little bit, there is a link to Secrets Unsealed's website, mm -hmm. which uh, I have the link to this specific study. You can download it in PDF format. Uh, from there, you can also purchase a physical copy if you would like to do so. Um, so that is in there. So go check that out so you can get all these notes. Um, there's how many pages is this? I mean, there's a lot here. 455. 455 pages. We're halfway through it double-sided so yes uh, there's a lot of information wow. in here so go check that out um let's pray and we'll get started that sounds good father in heaven we want to thank you again for this opportunity we have to come together and open your word father we pray that your holy spirit will be with us now as we do so Amen. give us the right words to speak uh, and give us understanding um, a, a lot of what we're reading can be very mind-boggling, kind of difficult to understand. We just pray that your spirit will guide us so we can uh, understand what we're reading and, uh, and apply it to our lives. Uh, Father, we pray for this blessing. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome back to another episode of uh, the study in Revelation 7 seals. I do have an AV question. If there's no light on this, is it still working? We're good? Okay. We should be good, yes. Because that light helps me Normally it is on, not yes. stare at everybody over here. But, okay, so we're good. And uh, we're going to pick up where we left off in your syllabus on page 212, 212. And there's the heading that says the fifth seal and the book of Revelation. And we want to go over the verse again in the fifth seal. Um, we always want to you know, continue to read that, and I'm going to have Savannah do that. It's going to be in Revelation chapter 6, starting with verse 9. This is the seal that we are currently studying. Oh, now? Whenever you're ready. Okay. <laughs> when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a, while, a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, as they were was completed. Okay, so we're on the fifth seal. The first seal, we had a horse. That was what color? White. White, yeah. The second seal, we had another horse. That was which color? Red, correct. Red, red. We had a third horse. That was the third seal, third horse, which was which color? Black. Black, well done. <laughs> and, and then the fourth horse, fourth seal, a fourth horse, pale. was pale. pale. Okay, good. Which brings us to the fifth seal. But as we've gone through, I'm going to use our board. Oh, are you? I'm going to do it. That's exciting. Because I have forgotten. It's been there for... The last two weeks. At least, right? At least two or two three weeks. weeks. Two, okay. Yeah. But um, it's, it's important that we... I'm going to go over to it. And you should be able to see on this board, this is a rough draft, if you mm -hmm. will. Okay? This is um, showing you the seven out. churches, the seven seals, and the seven trumpets. Right now we are on the fifth seal in Revelation, and uh, we've already covered uh, one through four, which, is, which begins in Revelation chapter six and goes all the way through chapter eight, verse one. But the reason I have this board here is because I want you to understand, the liter understand a little better the literary structure of the book of Revelation. So if you see that we have horse, white horse, seal number one, runs parallel with the churches, with church number one, which is Ephesus. The seven churches are in Revelation chapters two and three. We also have the seven trumpets, which we will study when we've completed the seven seals, but it also lines up with uh, trumpet number one. And these are just little brief descriptions that I wrote down from the Bible. Um, this isn't explaining 
what all of these mean, but I want you to visualize the order and the structure in which Revelation is with the seven churches, seals, and trumpets. We're kind of conditioned to read whatever happens after something must have literally taken place after something. For example, yeah. when we look at, we're missing, we're missing the seven here. So it's supposed to be number seven, Laodicea. Um, we would think that when the seals start, the first seal would be after the church of Laodicea. And then we would go through the seven seals, which ends with Christ's return. And then you have the seven trumpets. And lit, in a literary form, what we're kind of trained to do, we would think that the trumpets well, chronologically, it would have to come after that. But the way Revelation is, is the time period of the church of Ephesus is parallel with the time period of the first seal, which is parallel to the time period of the first trumpet. This is why we're discussing and studying each of these verses in Revelation uh, word by word, text by text and word by word, line upon line, right? Mm -hmm. Here a little, there a little, and going throughout the, uh, all of the Bible to better understand what's taking place. So we have different perspectives and aspects of the same time period. You get that with one, you get that with Smyrna. Look, Smyrna was the persecuted church in Revelation chapter 2. The word Smyrna means bittersweet myrrh. There was a lot of, of uh, death. You have the 10 days or the 10 years of uh, persecution from 303 to 313 A.D. Well, if you line that up with the seven, on the seven seals, you have the red horse. Number, the second seal, a red horse, red the symbol of blood, again, persecution, and then the seven trumpets. Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into that, uh, but it would parallel along with the second trumpet, and then so on uh, with the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So I, this is what I'm hoping to encourage you to be able to visualize so that uh, when we say it runs parallel, it runs parallel, same time period. Same time period, but we're getting the character of the church. You're getting the condition of the church. And then uh, when we get to the seven trumpets, well, you'll just have to, I'll let that be a cliffhanger for whenever we get to the <laughs> seven trumpets. But um, hopefully, and maybe you can write this out. I'm sure there's some neat charts um, that someone's probably already done. But also, uh, be careful with everything that you, if you're going to Google it and go online, because there are so many different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interpretations that people have, you know, and one of the things we've, we've done with our Sabbath school and with this class is to really encourage you to learn how to study the Bible yourself so that you can see the Bible interprets itself, you know, and we get mm -hmm. to use history, which is amazing because we have a lot of history, documented history, of the time, the time period we're in now with the fifth seal. So we're going to be going through a lot of quotes. Um, but that's great because we have the historical evidence um, that shows the Bible is accurate, um, that, we can, that it's a book that we can be trusted. So history just helps, uh, helps people. Uh, it's, it's helped me um, not to believe the Bible's real, but just uh, how important it is to trust in the Bible. We know in Bible history, we should know what's happening now because the Bible has given us historical examples over and over and over. And, and we're seeing that. We've seen that just in Revelation. We've been studying uh, Revelation for the last, I think, three and a half years. You know, the seven seals, I think we've been on a year. And we did uh, almost two and a half years on the, the seven churches. So mm -hmm. um, there, there's just so much information there. It's easy to read past it because mm -hmm. it's filled with symbols and hard to understand is, is what it seems if you were to just right. start with the verse. But when we have all of this um, content, the context, I really like our quarterly because it, it's proving our, the method of how important the method is mm -hmm. um, for Bible study. But we, we get the information. We have the solid foundation to understand what's in the book of Revelation. This is not a book. Turn to the last chapter, right? <laughs> let's, let's see. Let me show you what kind of, uh, let's see what the Bible says, what John says about. I think I know the verse you're talking Revelation about. chapter 22, right? And verse 10, then Paul, if you've got that, would you read it? This is what John's writing about the book of Revelation. And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. So this is not a book that's, 
you have to have somebody interpret for you. This is not a book that's, that nobody can understand. This is a book for the time that we're in now. Mm -hmm. It's a book for us to understand, but you've got to apply the Bible study methods that we do with everything in the Bible, and it, it makes a lot of sense. It's mm -hmm. helped us as we've studied the seals. So let's continue, unless you have any comments or anybody uh, else yeah. has a comment. By the way, we want to know who's watching, so please type your name in so we can say hi to you. Uh, we appreciate you joining us on this live stream, and we want to know who's we want to know who's watching and what you're thinking as well. So if you have any comments or questions, it takes 30 seconds to get to us, right? 30 takes seconds, 30 seconds for us to get to them and then it'll take. Right. All right. So <laughs> yeah, give or take a minute, you know, but we will. If you've got a question or a comment, uh, we would like to see that and address it as well and know that you're watching. I know some of you are, are gathered in groups. So again, we're grateful for that. Okay, let's continue now with our study. And I'll have Savannah read the quote from Great Controversy, page 59 and 60. In the 13th century was established that most terrible of all the engines of the papacy, the Inquisition. The Prince of Darkness wrought with the leaders of the papal hierarchy. In their secret councils, Satan and his angels controlled the minds of evil men, while unseen in the, in the midst stood an angel of God, taking the fearful record of their iniquitous decrees and writing the history of deeds too horrible to appear to human eyes. Babylon the Great was drunken with the bl blood of the saints. The, mingled for the mangled forms of millions of martyrs cried to God for vengeance upon that apostate power. And you'll probably see the note there. It says, notice the allusion to the fifth seal. So the martyrs during the Inquisition that, uh, that were slain during the period of the fourth seal cried out for justice under the fifth seal, mm -hmm. okay? And so you see how in this quote in Great Controversy, the, the tying together the fourth and fifth seal. And it's noteworthy that this statement that Ellen White affirms that angels kept a careful record of the wrong De wrongful decisions of earthly courts against God's people. <laughs> Got to not go on a tangent. <laughs> yeah. Just because of what we're seeing in yeah. our society, mm -hmm. you know, just the way how unfair things are, you know, it's right. um, again, but this is history repeating itself one final time, yeah. you know, and I know what we're going through um, as uh, globally, you know, as humans, um, is shocking and it's surprising and it's overwhelming, but we're we're seeing something that's taking place globally, that's taken place uh, many times throughout Bible history. You know, so the good news is that God is in control. Let's continue reading a couple other statements about the heavenly record keeping. And if you have your syllabus, you'll want to be on page two thirteen, uh, Savannah. <clears throat> The history of God's people during the ages of darkness that followed upon Rome's supremacy is written in heaven, but they have little place in human records. We can find few traces of their existence, except in the accusations of their persecutors. It was the policy of Rome to obliterate every trace of dissent from, their, from her doctrines or decrees. Everything heretical, whether persons or writings, she sought to destroy. Expressions of doubt or questions as to the authority of papal dogmas were enough to forfeit the life of rich or poor, high or low. Rome endeavored also to destroy every record of her cruelty towards dissenters. Papal councils decreed that books and writings containing such records should be committed to the flames. Before the invention of of printing, books were few in number, and in a form not favorable for preservation. Therefore, there was little to prevent the Romanists from carrying out their purpose. Now again, this is in, this is all very well documented during the time of the Dark Ages, which prophetically, the time period begins in 538, carries on through to 1798, where you had the French Revolution. So again, this is history, and in our syllabus, We'll get more historical quotes uh, outside of the spirit of prophecy. You know, so this wasn't uh, hidden information. Mm. In fact, this was uh, very bold actions that were taking place um, against people who didn't believe the way 
uh, papal Rome did. Let's look at the next quote from Great Controversy, page 77. When, when Rome at one time determined to exterminate the hated sect, and that would be the Waldensians, they were the ones who, um, they preserved the word. Mm -hmm. They hid in the mountains, you know, so this is uh, uh, a hated sect because they were still sharing the word in its pure form, right? It wasn't diluted by uh, language or somebody else's understanding right. of the Bible. So in talking about the Waldensians, it says that they determined to exterminate the hated sect. A bull, which is a papal letter, was issued by the Pope, condemning them as heretics and delivering them to slaughter. They were not accused as idlers or dishonest or disorderly, but it was declared that they had an, an appearance of piety. What does that word mean? It's like a... Modesty. A, 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 like, a, like a religious, you know... Uh, yeah. Uh, what, what's that, Teresa? Religious a religious front, right? The, yeah. the look of, of... Like a holy look, but not in a bad way, okay? If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It says that uh, they had an appearance of piety and sanctity that seduced the sheep of the true fold. Therefore, the Pope ordered that malicious and abominable sect of malignants, and this is quoting them, that if they refuse to abjure, to be crushed like venomous snakes. Now, she's actually quoting from Wiley, uh, Book 16, Chapter 1, continuing on with the Great Controversy quote, did this haughty potentate expect to meet those words again? Did he know that they were registered in the books of heaven to confront him at judgment. We can see this take place in the Bible when we see, um, do, do, you, do you remember in, um, in the Gospels and in Daniel and Revelation that there's a resurrection where some that are wicked are resurrected mm -hmm. and you get a description of those, those that um, crucified him, mm -hmm. you know, so there's, there's, a, there's obviously a remembrance of the deeds um, that people, especially the most wicked ones, uh, that, it, let's turn in our Bibles. I want you to read a verse real quick. It, every deed and every thought is, uh, is registered. I want you to notice what, in Ecclesiastes, what Solomon wrote. It's the very last verse in the book. which is right before Song of Solomon, right after Proverbs. And uh, so it's going to be chapter 12, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And it's going to be uh, verse 13 and 14. And Paul, if you have that, would you read that, please? Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. So what do you think it, when, when Solomon's talking about secret thing, what do you think he's talking about when he says that? Things of your mind. Okay. Your heart. Yeah. Things that other people don't know about. Things behind closed doors. Yeah. But does God know? Mm. So there, there's no hiding from God. No. no. Right? And, if, and Jesus talks about... If we think something, it's the same as doing it. Mm -hmm. If we've purposed it in our heart, mm -hmm. it's the same thing as doing it. So there is a record, verse 14, for God bring, will bring in every work into judgment, including every secret thing. So if you, you may do something that looks good on the outside, but inside, um, you know, you have the malintent or what, whatever the case mm -hmm. is, uh, because who searches our heart? God, God searches our heart, yeah. you know, so there's, he, those things will be, that, that's why conversion uh, takes place in, in the heart, you know, circumcision is of the heart. Mm -hmm. It's not just what we do on the outside, and yes, our lives on the outside change, you mm -hmm. know, we, we're, we're different people, but um, the very things that we have in our heart and in our mind are being recorded. That can be kind of scary. Yeah, every last thought, yeah. You know, how, how uh, important, go to Romans chapter 12. How important is it to make sure our mind is right? Romans chapter 12. And Savannah, if you would read verse 
2, please. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So don't be like the world, be transformed, and what's renewed? The mind. The, the mind. Your mind is. Mm -hmm. So when your mind's renewed, your, your actions are going to be uh, renewed as well. And you have that in verse 1, talking about that presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. But you know that word transformed in verse 2 is the Greek word metamorphosis. <laughs> That's a total change. It's completely different. Right. What is totally changed? The mind. Yeah. You know, that in the mind and our, in our heart, that's, that's synonymous in the Bible, okay? When it says their mind or your heart, um, it's, they're both the same thing, mm -hmm. you know? So when our mind is renewed and transformed, our heart is circumcised, Jesus. God puts in the heart of flesh where his word and his law, as he talks about in Ezekiel, removes the stony heart and puts in a heart where his word and his law is, mm -hmm. is in. So it's, it's so important that in our walk with God, that it's our heart and our minds that are transformed. It's not just what we do mm. on the outside. Right. People are very good. We all are at hiding things, <laughs> you know, but the, the most important, look, with God knowing what's inside our hearts and our minds, the good news is he knows that it needs to change, mm. you know? So those are the things that if we think it, that's part of the process of confession and repentance. Mm -hmm. To even have the thought uh, is what we, we read in um, Desire of Ages uh, when we did our study last night that Jesus didn't even have a sinful thought because it would have given a foothold, you know, for Satan to have mm -hmm. access to him. So we need to be at the point where we don't even think that way, mm -hmm. you know, and that's right. that may seem impossible, but with God, Things possible. All things, things are possible, possible, right? Hey, he said it. Okay, let's carry on. The question is, when will these church leaders have to face the records that the angels wrote during the period of papal supremacy? The answer is in the following statement. There, it's talking about the outside, the New Jerusalem after the millennium, in, in uh, Great Controversy, are papists, priests, and prelates who claim to be Christ ambassadors yet employed the rack, the dungeon, and the stake to control the consciences of people. There are the proud pontiffs who exalted themselves above who? God. Above God and presumed to change the law of the Most High. Those pretended fathers of the church have an account to render to God. Can anybody change the law of God? Mm -mm. No. Who wrote it? God, with his finger on stone. When you write something on stone, it stays there, hmm. right? Have you ever written anything on stone? Nope. I haven't either. But we use that term today, you know. Yeah. It was it's written, it's written in stone, in stone now. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's, it, he could have had Moses write it, right? right. He gave him the instructions to build the, the temple and and the ark and all the articles of furniture, mm -hmm. you know, the Mosaic law, which we studied in Sabbath school, you know, that he, that he wrote. Why, why didn't he let Moses write the Ten Commandments? Because it's never changing. It will not change. And, this, this, and we have to understand, too, the, we did a State of the Dead study last week. <laughs> we should do a study on the law. Um, because mm -hmm. it, it's so important to understand that the law has always, always existed. Yeah. Though it was written in stone on Mount Sinai, it existed before. Yeah. The Sabbath existed before Mount Sinai. Thou shalt not kill. Well, if it wasn't wrong, because there were no Ten Commandments then, then mm -hmm. Cain shouldn't be held accountable mm -hmm. right? You know, for killing his brother Abel. Or mm -hmm. Eve shouldn't be held accountable for putting herself before God. Do, do you see how confusing that is? Mm -hmm. You know, when we want to do away with something, that's mm -hmm. everlasting because remember the law is the law of love and the law of liberty. It is the very character of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and if the law didn't exist, the flood shouldn't have happened either. Yeah, because there would have been no there sin. There would have been no sin. Right. Mm -hmm. How would people have known what sin was? I mean, the, the command that we knew was not to eat from the tree. Right. Okay. And they did that. 
Um, but uh, there, there's a lot we could go into that, but it's, it's very important how, uh, to know that God's law. Mm-hmm. Notice Moses wrote on parchment. Part, did they have parchment then? or Papyrus. Some kind of paper. <laughs> Ancient form of paper <laughs> that was stored in the side of the ark. And you know, you hear the expression, um, well, the law was nailed to the cross. Mm-hmm. Well, you can nail paper yeah. to a cross or parchment. You can't nail stone to the cross. It's not talking about God's law because yeah. it, it's the very character of God. We don't want to do away with the character of God. That's what Satan wants. Mm-hmm. That's what his accusation was uh, in heaven. That's what his accusation was in the Garden of Eden was that uh, you can't be obedient to God right. out of your own will with a heart of love. Jesus says in John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. Yeah. The condition is love. He mm-hmm. doesn't want anybody to do it because they're afraid, any scare tactics. Because I have if to. If you love me, because it reflects the love of God. Love yeah. the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, the first four commandments teach you how to love God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and the last six commandments teach you how to love your Our neighbor. neighbor. Okay. I don't know how I got on a tangent on that. <laughs> because the law was being changed. That's how we got on the tangents of that. During the dark ages, these proud pontiffs exalted themselves above God and presumed to change the law of the Most High. And we know that that has to do with the Sabbath. That the big, the big change in the breach in God's law is the seventh day Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Those pretended fathers of the church have an account to render to God. And I know this is bold statements, but listen as we, uh, as we continue to read. From which they would fain be excused. Too late they are made to see that the omniscient one is jealous of his law and that he will in no wise clear the guilty. They learn now that Christ identifies his interest with that of his suffering people. Mm -hmm. Remember, it's it's always about the love of Jesus. That's one of the big things that I think uh, we tend to neglect when we study Bible prophecy, when we study the commandments or the state of the dead. You know, we have all these names for beliefs, but uh, without the love of Jesus, without seeing Jesus at the center of it and having the love of Jesus, these can be very um, diluted, yeah. you know, or hard to accept or believe in, mm-hmm. or maybe hard to share, you know, hard to present to others. It's always about Christ identifying his interests and his love for his people and here his suffering people. They feel the force of his own words. This is what Jesus said. And as much as you have done it to one of the least of my brethren, you've done it to who? Me. So if the way we treat each other, who are we treating like that as well? Christ. Jesus. Jesus. That's what Jesus said. If we are rude to somebody, we're rude to Jesus. If we are kind to somebody, we're kind to Jesus. Don't be mean. <laughs> Don't be rude, Right. Well, and I feel like a lot of people don't think of it that way. They just think of it on the good side of things. Well, I'm giving food to the homeless. Right. Like I've, and I'm that is doing a good thing. Too. Yeah, and it's right. a very good thing. Right. Don't get me wrong. But I don't feel like, oh, if I'm going to punch this guy in the face, technically, I mean, like yeah. I could be, you know, or if I'm yelling at somebody or, mm. you know, or I'm yelling at my husband even, oh. you know. I mean, not that we do that, (laughs) just saying, but I mean, like, even in that kind of relationship, like I get in a fight with my best friend or I ignore somebody who's trying to talk to me or get my attention or something, even like say a child who's trying to get your attention or who wants you to be involved or something, you have to think of it as like that could be Christ, that could be an angel, that could be someone Mm. To you know, I'm I don't even know how to explain it, but no, I like even I job. don't really think of it like that all yeah. the time. Doesn't that make it a lot deeper? Yeah. Um, you know, when we apply, it, when you think of somebody in a manner that's disrespectful, that's rude, that's hateful, mm-hmm. you're doing that to Christ. Mm-hmm. That's part of conversion. That our mind is renewed. So that whenever we're thinking of people, whenever, uh, in whatever uh, scenario we're in, at work, at church, whatever it mm-hmm. is, when those thoughts come to mind, that's the time when we need to have a verse like Romans 12, 2 come to our mind. And that's, a, that's a great way to help 
Yeah. That was something I was taught a long time ago that um, when you start to have a thought or, or a feeling, um, replace that thought or feeling with a verse. So when that happens, and I'm thinking ill of somebody or whatever the case is, right, you know what? Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And by the time you finish the verse, you forgot what you were about to talk about. So you're literally replacing, let's call it garbage, <laughs> fair enough, mm -hmm. garbage with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important to study the Word and not just watch a video, um, but to dive deep into the Word mm -hmm. because you're re our minds are so filled with garbage that uh, it, it, only the Word of God can clear it out. Right. You know, there's, there's nothing else, and what, a, what not a better thing to have replaced that than thoughts of Still, love. What you reap is what you sow. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, and it starts in our hearts. Yeah. So let, let your, let, don't let your hearts be troubled, <laughs> but let them be renewed and refreshed. Okay, where are we at? The angels, the page 214? Two, yeah. On page? Okay. Correct. The angels wrote in the books of heaven all the iniquitous acts that the papal system performed against God's people during the dark ages. One day, the lion of the tribe of Judah will open the records before the universe of God, will before the universe, and God will judge and avenge the blood of those who died unjustly. Did Jesus die unjustly? Yes. What a microcosm of what we're going to be going through um, at this time in Earth's history. Mm -hmm. We're going to suffer like Christ suffered. You ever thought of that? Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that as a Christian, we shouldn't suffer. No. Paul says, I rejoice in my present suffering. Right. You know, and we read, we read text uh, during this study about that that's something God's people will go through. But again, it won't be, oh, poor me, because our minds are renewed. Yeah. We're going to know that this is standing up for Christ. It'll be a privilege it, to suffer. Oh, that's right. It'll be a so. privilege to suffer to... You know, we, if we die, let's die in Christ. Mm -hmm. When we live, let's live in Christ. Whatever we do, do to the glory of God. Amen. It says that, the, uh, that this, this is to say that God will rectify the erroneous verdicts of earthly courts against God's people. I want you to go in your Bibles to Psalms chapter 77. Let me give you a biblical example of this. Are some of you maybe looking at the way things are happening in the world? It's hard not to look at. I know some people don't watch the news, read the news. I know some people are consumed by it, and then I think I'm kind of in the middle where I watch it, you know, or I read it. I don't watch it because if you read it, you can dictate what, you, yeah. you know, what comes in. But, mm -hmm. but you see that um, just how unfair the world is. Do you, do you see that? Mm -hmm. Like just how unfair... And I mean, just as a world or as a country or maybe your, where you work, you know, what, whatever the circumstances, there's a lot of things that seem unfair. And I want you to notice um, a verse here, 77, 13, David says, your way, O God, is where? In the In sanctuary. sanctuary. In the sanctuary, who is so great a God as our God. Now, Next to that text, write 7317. So you're going to stay in the same book, and you're going to go to Psalms chapter 73, 13. So 70, 73, 17, <laughs> and then 77, 13. It's kind of like a, one of those number things. 73, 17 is where we're going now. But tell you what, <laughs> let's, read, let's read the chapter. With the Savannah's whole. wonderful voice. Yes, let's start in verse 1. Of 73? Of chapter 73. Because I want you to, to see what Dave, uh, what's being described here. Um, this is a psalm of Asaph. Okay, so uh, go ahead and, and read, please. Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, for there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. 
They have more than more than heart could wish. Okay, so let's. Do you understand what's being explained here? His perspective. Okay, so he starts in in verses one and two, but but as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, and he tells you what he's thinking. For I was envious of who, the, the boastful. boastful. When I saw the prosperity of who, the wicked. Now I apply that personally. Okay, do we have those moments mm. when we're like, why is this person so messed up, and they got the raise mm -hmm. or? They're not being punished for what they're mm -hmm. doing, right? So you have him going through that now, and he's talking about he's talking about the prosperity of the wicked and how he had almost slipped, how he had almost stumbled, uh, and what he was envious of. Uh, go ahead and, and continue on. Start uh, verse eight. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here and waters are full of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, and they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, Behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Okay. So can you think of a time in your life, maybe it's been recent, <laughs> or when we look at things going on, you know how this is just speaking our language, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's just going on. And do you notice in verse 11 it says, they say, how does God know? It says that, uh, and is there knowledge in the Most High? Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Can you think of another time when someone says, uh, you know, well, who's your God? Remember Pharaoh, the way, the way he acted, you mm -hmm. know? And, and you, there's, there's many uh, examples in the Bible where we have where this is, you know, this question, who is your God? And, and we see that in Revelation 13 as well. So all of this, this is some mental anguish. Yeah. That he's going, and we go through this, and I, I know we do. Yeah, 12 was the one that hit me, you know, how often we see other people, you know, it seems like life is good, you know, they got the big fancy house and the truck and the boat and, mm. you know, all this stuff. They've got all these riches of the world that we, you know, we, we envy. Yeah. And it's like, well, you got to look at the big picture, you know, the riches we're going to have here are nothing compared to what's right. coming. Yeah, you store know? up your treasure. But in, we're so short-sighted. Right, right. Yeah. you know, and that, and, and maybe you look at the people and they have their riches and it's like, they don't even work. And here yeah, some, some people, people work so hard like and they, they yeah. barely, you know, get enough, what we call it living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. you know, and, and again, we're seeing a lot of stuff right now, right. you know, uh, 40, nearly 40 million unemployed Americans, you know, all this stuff. But I want you to see that there's an answer to all of this. And it's summed up in verse 17. Look at the, the remedy of and the, where the peace came from and the understanding. So of all this chaotic time, looking at the world prospering, what was it that gave him peace and understanding? Verse 17. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. You see how important it is to understand the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And when we study the sanctuary, we see the process of sin being separated from the sinner. Those who are repentant, those who have given their hearts to, to God. And we also see the result of what happens for the people who don't. Mm -hmm. you know, but the, the, when you look at the sanctuary, you see Jesus. Mm -hmm. You see him at the altar, the cross. The labor, the tomb and his resurrection, right? The showbread, he is the bread, the word of God. The incense, his blood is uh, mingled with the incense and in our prayers that make our prayers even possible to be, be brought before God. We see the light. He is the light of the world. We see, we see Jesus. And you go into the most holy place and you have the ark and you have the law and the man. You know, all of this, it points to Jesus. So he goes, all of this chaos that's taking place in the world, all of these things that cause us mental anguish, because I would, I would say we probably all go through mm -hmm. part of some this, of all this, of it, maybe least, yeah. some even more than this. 
But when he looked to Jesus, when he looked at the sanctuary, then he had understanding. Right. And he realized. So just like the souls are crying out in the fifth seal, where's our justice? Mm -hmm. Right? Where's our justice? Is it going to happen because of how um, wrong it was and how uh, mistreated and killed the erroneous verdicts of earthly courts against the people? Where is justice? In Jesus and in the sanctuary, there is justice. Really good text that made me think about that. Mm -hmm. For those of us who think, is there ever going to be justice? Yes, there will be. And it'll be a justice that no court on earth could ever produce or meet out. Right. You know what I mean? Like this is going to be vengeance is God's. Mm -hmm. it, it's not ours. We need to have the hearts of compassion, but justice will come. We serve a God who is merciful and just. Mm -hmm. We saw that right. in the flood. That's the, what the rainbow represents, the bow in the sky of God's mercy and his justness. And we see that rainbow in the description of him in Revelation that encircles his throne. We serve a God that is just. But we need to pray for people. So don't look at these other people and say, I want justice yeah. for them. <laughs> Where is it? Because when we look at the sanctuary, we should want their hearts to be converted. Mm -hmm. Right. Love our enemies. That's mm -hmm. a hard thing to learn, right? Yeah. It just doesn't seem natural to do that. So it says that uh, the divine supreme court of the universe will overturn the decisions of the lower human courts on earth. Praise God. The wicked priests, prelates, and popes will see that the sealed book open. They will see the sealed book open, and they will remember everything that they did to God's people. They will then confess before the universe that they were wrong, and God's people will write. Daniel 7 vividly describes the judgment where the verdicts of human courts will be overturned. So let's look in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 21. Daniel 7 and verse 21. And this is describing the judgment where the verdicts of human courts will be overturned and describes the papal little horn that persecuted the saints of the Most High for a time. Times and dividing a time, three and a half years, 42 months, 1,260 days, 1,260 years. All the same thing. We could have had that in our Sabbath school lesson, you know, right. talking about the same time period but used in different yeah. expressions. Um, okay, Paul, do you have verse 21 and could, will you do verse 25 as well? 21 and 25. I was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them. 25, he shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and half a time. So here you have the wrongful treatment of the saints, right? You mm -hmm. have the trampling of the saints, making war against the saints. And verse 20 says, prevailing against them. Mm. That kind of test of faith leads people to the question of where is God mm -hmm. or right. all I can do is trust in God. You know, when we go through trials, that's your separation of the wheat and the tares, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, is God here? Is he not? We, our faith has to be tested. And when you read a verse like this, that, that the little horn was able to prevail over a saint, you may think, where, where is God in all of this? Yeah. And, and so in the fifth seal, you have the martyrs saying, Where's our justice? Right. You know, we died. They died in Christ. And, and remember, though, he says, hold on, you know, because this is going to happen again. And uh, you'll all be rewarded together. You mm -hmm. know, so the other the, the martyrs to come, mm -hmm. if you will, will be um, will be joined together. But God will be victorious. And he will prevail and he will overturn uh, these um, wrong convictions and and executions. During this period, the papacy mowed down God's people without mercy. We're talking about the dark ages here. The righteous died and the, the wicked, wicked lived. lived. That's messed up. Yeah. The human court of the Inquisition found God's people guilty and executed them. This was during the period of the fourth horse. The unjust verdicts of human courts had to be rectified and proper verdict given. This is the reason why the martyrs whom the papacy condemned and slew 
cried out for God to judge and avenge. Let's read the next quote, Savannah. <clears throat> Millions have gone down to the grave loaded with infamy, infamy because they refuse to yield to the deceptive claims of Satan. By human tribunals, the children of God have been adjudged the vilest criminals. But the day is near when God is judged himself. Then the decisions of earth shall be reversed. The rebuke of his people shall he take away. White robes will be given to every one of them. Christ Object Lessons, page 179. What do they get? White robes. Yeah, and quoting Isaiah 25, 8. White robes will be given to every one of them. That's Revelation 6, 11. The purpose of heavenly judgment in Daniel 7 is to vindicate the cases of those who the little horn unjustly condemned and killed during the 1260 years. Now we can read verses, are you still in Daniel? Chapter yes. 7, will you read verse 26 and 27? But the court shall be seated and they shall take away his, the little horns, mm -hmm. uh, to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people, the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall, shall serve and obey him. So does God vindicate his people? Yes. He yes. does. And I want you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Mark. I want, to, I want you to read something. Uh, Mark chapter 13. Mark is one of the synoptic gospels, so I would encourage you to compare this chapter with Matthew 24 and Luke chapter 21, really Luke 17 through 21, um, but mainly 21, to see the different aspects of, of, um, of the same thing that's going on here. Now, if you look at verse, let's start at verse 11. I want you to just, so this is Jesus talking to his people, what's going to take place? It says, but when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not do what? Worry. Don't worry beforehand. Don't premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it's not you who speaks, but who? The, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now, that's an awesome promise. Okay. And I know uh, uh, one of the other gospels says, um, the Holy Spirit will bring into remembrance the things that you mm -hmm. have learned. Mm -hmm. You got to learn it. Okay, notice this, verse 12. Now, brother will betray brother to what? To death. death. To death. That's a, would you consider brother, you have a brother, mm -hmm. close relationship? Mm -hmm. And a father his child, and children will rise up against who? Parents. And cause them to be what? Put to death. This sounds like a messed up thing again yeah. that's taking place. And these are the closest relationships um, that you, you would never think this type of scenario would happen. And uh, this is something to be prepared for. I'm not saying be afraid of your parents. Your parents don't be afraid of your kids. I mean, we're already kind of starting to see it now. Yeah. Yeah, people rising up against. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's, you, you don't have to look far in the news to see something like that. But remember here, in this case, it's over Jesus. Right. You know, it's over, it's not just a person killing a sibling, you know, it's being hated for his name's sake. Because look at verse 13. You will be hated by all for my, my name's, name's sake. sake. But he who does what? Endures. Endures to win. The end. Shall be saved. saved. And in Revelation, you get that constant reminder. Endure. Endure. Mm -hmm. Endure. Here's the patience of the saints. You know, Paul says, uh, fight the good fight. You mm -hmm. know, continue in the race. We're always getting that encouragement. Because when we put our trust in anybody but God, we are going to be severely disappointed. Mm -hmm. right. That's not to say that we can't have great, meaningful relationships with each other. But if we think about the times when we've been hurt the most, it's by the people we love the most, right? Mm -hmm. Or the people that uh, love us the most. Right. And when we trust in Jesus, put all of our trust in, believeth in him, put all our trust into... Um, we don't have to worry about our condition of what we're going to experience in this end time. Just like the people during the Dark Ages stayed faithful. I mean, you had the reformers, you had people singing 
as they were burning on the stake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I encourage, I encourage that should any of us die, die singing, right? <laughs> so when we resurrect, we're still singing. Right. When we, when we come out of the grave. <laughs> We'll be finishing the verse. Do we all need to pick the same song so we're in unison? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, we can. Let's get together. <laughs> yeah, good idea. Yeah. We'll do a study on that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See which hymn we want to come out of the grave singing. Should we die? Let's continue on in our syllabus. The book of Revelation, chapter 5, contains the indelible record of the deeds that the angels recorded during the period of papal supremacy. After the millennium, Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, will open the book and the wicked oppressors of God's faithful people will remember their evil deeds towards the righteous. This book not only contail, contains the baleful record of papal history, it contains the entire history of the human race, including the acts of religious leaders against Jesus. So I guess I kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. When the Jewish leadership chose Barabbas, over Jesus. Notice what was written in Christ Object Lesson, Savannah, page 294. Thus the Jewish leaders made their choice. Their decision was registered in the book, which John saw in the hand of him that sat upon the throne, the book that no man could open. In all its vindictiveness, this decision will appear before them in the day when the book is unsealed by the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So this, de this decision will appear before the Jewish leaders after the millennium and when they are outside the holy city of Jerusalem. The next quote from Great Controversy, page 667, Savannah. <laughs> the awful spectacle appears just as it was. Satan, his angels, and his subjects have no power to turn from the picture of their own work. Each actor recalls the part that he performed. Herod, who slew the innocent children of Bethlehem that he might destroy the king of Israel. The base Herodias, upon whose guilty soul rests the blood of John the Baptist. The weak, time-serving pilot, the mocking soldiers, the priests and rulers, and the maddening throng who cried, His blood be on us and our children. All behold the enormity of their guilt, they vainly seek to hide from the divine majesty of his countenance, outshining the glory of the sun, while the redeemed cast their crowns at the Savior's feet, exclaiming, He died for me. Mm. What an amazing chapter in the book of great controversy. Uh, but you see, we have a list of certain people here. Yeah. <laughs> and we have historical record of, of how they treated Jesus. I mean, mm. Jesus was treated the most unjustly of anybody mm -hmm. that's ever lived on the planet right. because he was without sin. You know, he didn't deserve any of this. These, when we study the seals, it's not just the historical application that, that we're trying to study. We want to see how, how does the fifth seal, how does it apply to me and my relationship with God? Mm -hmm. You know, how does this prepare me to be ready for what's, what for tomorrow, the next stage that happens in earth, whatever is going to happen next, we know that other things are going to happen and in rapid succession. Right. How can this, how does this study, and maybe you guys can help me out. And if I know I don't like being put on the spot either, <laughs> you know, but is when you, when you hear about the, the injustice, but God vindicating his people and justice uh, being served, so to speak, what does that do for you? when we study something like the fifth seal that seems so complex, how can that help you in your own heart? Or do you have anything? It's okay if you don't, because I didn't pre-ask that question, and I know that's a lot of information. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, that's a deep one. That's a deep one. Turn in, turn in Revelation 22, but if you think of something, let me know. And maybe somebody um, here that I'll put you on the spot too. He prepares to be martyrs, like they were martyrs. Okay, so... Yeah. There's the end state. The end state is that we will be saved. Yeah. So Lance is talking about that. It it prepares us that that we we may die. We may be those martyrs, but we will suffer. But we see the end result mm -hmm. of what's taking place, and that's um, restoration, mm -hmm. glorification. You know, uh, uh, a life. Uh, our, we don't live for this life. Right. 
we live for the eternal life, but we live this life for Christ. Mm -hmm. Is that? We, we know the suffering will have a purpose. The suffering, ha that's right, in, in Christ, for Christ's sake, in mm -hmm. Christ's name. Yeah. If you're suffering because you deserve it, even Paul talked about it. He's like, that's not a good that's thing. A whole yeah, different, that's you know? a whole different thing. <laughs> like if you're breaking laws and you're yeah. suffering, like that's not a good thing. But if you're suffering because for, for Christ, in Christ's name, for Christ's sake, that's a good thing mm. in that we know what the end result is going to be. And we can right. have confidence, like Lance was talking about, in that end result. R go ahead. <laughs> now, I want to hear what you have to say. Well, I was just going to say that I don't know that it, it gives us any more hope than the ones that have already died as martyrs, just because they knew that they already knew this. We just have it written down. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right. Kind of like your analogy for the Ten Commandments. In the beginning of time, they weren't written down, but everybody knew right. what it was, and then Moses wrote them down. Mm -hmm. And I feel it's the same type of thing is that the people who didn't have this that were dying in the first century church or in like the middle ages and all that kind of stuff you know they knew this was going to happen they knew that they were going to be vindicated they didn't know when but they knew it was going to happen right i think it maybe okay gives us a little more hope because we can see okay. the light at the end of the tunnel right. does that make sense it does where we know, okay, now we can follow, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and then this will happen, right. where they maybe didn't have that timeline, but yeah. now we have something yeah. to reference back to. We're very privileged. Yeah, we're very we privileged because we can see, okay, this has happened already, right. and then this has happened. So even if we die tomorrow or next week or next year or don't ever die, yeah. you know, we have this timeline to reference back to being like, okay, this – all of this has already happened, so this is happening soon. Right. Like, we can legitimately say this is happening soon. Yeah. Where people back in the first century said, this is happening soon. Yeah. Well, you have 4,000 more years to go, <laughs> sweetie. But <laughs> we, we only have yeah. 10 years, 1,000 yeah. years. Yeah. You know, so we're so much closer, we're closer, and we know that. That's right. We're closer. And that's a good point. When the souls cry out from the altar, where is the justice? Remember... Who's crying out and how are they crying out? Because our worldly minds want to take it literally mm. that, we're, that there's these voices, where's our justice? Where's mm -hmm. our justice? How were they crying out? How did, how did Abel's blood cry out for justice? It's spilled. <laughs> because it was spilled. It was just spilled. That's correct. It was spilled. Unjustly. Mm -hmm. right. It was unjustly. So again, when, and that's why we did that state, the State of the Dead study in just a little bit of a one. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a literal soul in the temple floating around. Where's our justice? Where's yeah. our justice? Where's our justice? We, we learned what altar that was poured out upon. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they cry out for justice because... Their blood was spilt. Unjustly. That's the unjustly. unjustly. That's the crying out for justice. Mm -hmm. So we know what the souls are. They're not disembodied beings or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And we know that there's not the audible voice. But because the blood was shed unjustly mm -hmm. for Jesus, just like Jesus did for us, right. that's the crying out of the, um, of the unjustice and where is our justice at. Mm -hmm. Teresa, did you have a comment? Yeah, yeah, and Teresa's saying from Hebrews that Jesus suffered this for all of us, but he he saw the end. He mm -hmm. he knew what it was for. Is that the point you were? The joy of that, that he's gonna, oh, that he's what great joy! Mm -hmm. What great joy! You know, we we put so much into this earth that you know we. It's like we don't have our, our grip on heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if we could just live in the atmosphere of heaven and know, you know, what's to come forward. This is, who wants to be on this earth like this, the right. way it's going? Yeah. This is terrible, right? <laughs> this, Maybe people this are This is not my paradise. This is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if we only knew yeah. <laughs> what was waiting for us, uh, I think the world would be Which is why we should know, know, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, and this is the message of hope. So when we study revelation in the churches in the seals in the trumpets we see hope mm -hmm. we see history mm -hmm. 
we see it in advance. It's called prophecy. Right. You know, so we're able to see what's going to happen based on what's happened before. We've been warned. Let's wrap up with the verse in Revelation chapter 22 with what Jesus says. And you read the verse beginning, Paul, at 10, when you said, don't seal the words of this prophecy of this book. The time is at hand. Give a, read the promise that Jesus gives us in verses 12 and 13. 12, All the way to uh, 14. 12 through 14. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me, to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. What an what awesome message of hope. So endure. Right. Because we, we can't, I hath not seen, nor hath ear heard. heard. I think that's the King James Version. That would be your version. Yeah, my version. <laughs> um, nor is the, what is it, the thought entered into the mind. Mm -hmm of what's to come, mm. you know? So we, we study heaven, think about it, and know that you're not even close. You can't, I mean, the, the authors of the Bible had a hard time trying to write down what they saw, right. you know, um, into, you know, there's no word for this, so I'm going to say, oh, it looked like crystals. A it looked like... with fiery wheels. Right? <laughs> yeah, because <Yeah. laughs> you know? that's like the only way I could try to explain it to somebody, we're all like... A throne with fiery wheels, you know, right. picture a chariot on fire, you know. Yeah. But blessed are those who do his commandments. Remember, Jesus says, if you love me, obey my commandments. Do my commandments. Keep, Keep my, my commandments. commandments. He wants people who are in love with him because he is in love with us. Jesus has loved, he loves us first. He created us mm -hmm. because, you know, at, with, a, with a loving heart. He is not a different God. He's a God of love that he was at creation in the Old Testament, the New Testament, now, what we're going to experience here in the near future as well, remember that God is love, mm -hmm. and He wants our hearts to be filled with that love so that when we look at the others around us, we have that compassion and that desire for every soul to be saved. Right. You know, and not fighting over the things of the world. Mm -hmm. that's, all I, that's all I have to say. Do you guys have any comments? I know it's, it's hard to interject when we read so many quotes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but we're going to start. So please make your mark in your syllabus where it says the two stages of the fifth seal. And we will study this next week. I think I'm going to be without Paul and Savannah. <laughs> yes, we will be. I don't know how I feel about that. Camping. I'm going to be lonely. <laughs> right. We have we're, to find we'll somebody else to help I'm you taking my syllabus with me <laughs> You're gonna to take study. Your syllabus with I you? am. So I will be with you in spirit. Well, <laughs> but not that kind of not spirit. That not kind that kind of, of spirit. spirit. Not a disembodied spirit. Um, okay, so we will revisit the rest of this chapter uh, next week. And I'm going to call on somebody that's probably watching to come up here and stand here with me. And if you have an iPhone, bring it so we can put it on Natali because he's just been dying to get on camera. <laughs> Back there, he's doing this right now, which means this no. is opposite day. So um, thank you for joining us. Um, I want to um, lift up somebody's name that uh, one of my uh, subcontractors, uh, his mother, uh, her name, and, and I'm sorry, it's it's French, so I'm going to just not say it well, but Pierriette, Pierriette. Mm -hmm. It's Pierre, but the female version of Pierre, Pierriette. But she's been sick, and I just want to let you know, Alan, that we're praying for your mom. And uh, also Jen and Travis, uh, who tested positive for COVID a few, mm. about four weeks ago, yeah. um, have tested negative now. So praise God. Thank you for your prayers. He's answering prayers. Mm. Let's not forget to thank God um, for all the wonderful things that he does for us. Mm -hmm. So right. um, I'm going to have Paul close with prayer since I talk so much. <laughs> we can do it. All right. Father in heaven, again, we want to thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. We want to thank you for the sunshine, the blue skies. Father, we thank you for this time that we spent together uh, opening your word and studying it. We pray that your spirit will help us to understand and to absorb the things that we are learning. Uh, Father, we just pray that you will guide us throughout our upcoming week. Uh, send your angels and your spirit to guide us and keep us safe. And we just pray that everything we be that we do be to 
to your honor and glory. Amen. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So thank you again, Ben, for another study. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Please subscribe. Have we gotten any more? Um, we're still at 193. I'd have to, I'd have to look, but somebody's uh, watching that hasn't subscribed. Yes, please oh. hit that subscribe right, button. Lance. Oh, we found one. Yep. <laughs> so we need six more after him. <laughs> so, Get to 200. Right. So please subscribe. Um, and I just lost my train of thought. Hey, I do so, that all the time. You know, like it, subscribe. It happens, thanks so. for watching. Happy yep, Sabbath. Th thanks oh, for watching. We'll go. see you next week. What she said. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> well, we won't see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>